Could a hurricane hit the UK? What about a typhoon or a cyclone? And what do all these words mean anyway? First of all, a cyclone is simply an area of low pressure. In the southern hemisphere, winds rotate clockwise around low pressure. And in the northern hemisphere, winds rotate anti-clockwise. Cyclones that occur in the tropics are called tropical cyclones. Cyclones that occur outside the tropics are called extratropical cyclones or mid-latitude lows, but often meteorologists will just talk about lows or depressions. Tropical cyclones can have lots of different names too, depending on their intensity and where on the planet they occur. In the tropical Atlantic, cyclones begin life as thunderstorms, which can cluster together and develop a wind circulation. While these winds are under 39 miles an hour, these cyclones are called tropical depressions. If these cyclones strengthen and their sustained winds reach 39 miles an hour, they are called tropical storms and given a name by the National Hurricane Centre. If the tropical storm reaches 74 miles per hour, it becomes a hurricane. Then there are five categories of hurricane, also based on wind thresholds. Hurricanes that reach category three or higher are called major hurricanes. Elsewhere around the world, there are different names for these, for example, typhoons or cyclones, but they all form in the same way. For a group of thunderstorms to develop into a tropical cyclone, you need warm seas with a temperature higher than 26.5 Celsius. That's the fuel source. You also need it to be at least five degrees north or south of the equator. And that's because the Earth rotates faster at the equator than at the poles. So as air moves away from the equator, it's increasingly deflected. For example, air that moves in the northern hemisphere is increasingly deflected to the right as it moves away from the equator. And it's that deflection that gets tropical cyclones spinning. You also need to have very little change in wind speed or direction with increasing height. That's low wind shear. High wind shear tends to blow these storms apart. A mature hurricane takes the form of a cylinder of deep thundercloud known as the eye wall. Within this eye wall, there's a relatively small area of intense horizontal winds at the surface, often in excess of 100 miles an hour, while air rises strongly above, maintaining these deep cumulonimbus clouds with lots of lightning and very heavy rain. About six miles above the surface, cloud tops are carried outwards to give thick layers of outward spiraling cloud and strong winds leaving the tropical cyclone core. Sinking air in the eye of the hurricane leads to clear skies and light winds at the surface. And if a hurricane moves inland or over cooler seas, it will quickly lose its source of fuel and weaken. Extratropical cyclones, such as the Atlantic lows we normally get in the UK, are formed and built differently. In the tropics, there isn't much variation in temperature or humidity. In the mid-latitudes, there's a big contrast between warm air to the south and cold air to the north. Where these air masses collide, you get weather fronts. And if the warm air moves north and the cold air moves south, a low pressure system can form. And this, if it's helped along by the jet stream, fast flowing current of air high in the sky, can deepen significantly. Very powerful mid-latitude lows can develop hurricane force winds, but they're not technically hurricanes since they develop differently and have a different structure. Typically, these lows are larger in area, but are not as intense. Their strong winds are more spread out away from the center low pressure. They also have weather fronts with bands of rain and sudden changes in temperature as they move through. Hurricanes, meanwhile, have similar temperature and humidity throughout their structure, but their intense winds affect a smaller area close to the eye. The 1987 Great Storm was a particularly powerful extratropical cyclone. It didn't form in the tropics, so it was never a hurricane, but it did form where there was a steep temperature gradient and strong jet stream. Sometimes hurricanes can drift north into the cooler waters of the North Atlantic. Normally, 
they will quickly weaken. But if they are picked up by the jet stream, they can gain a new lease of life. When this happens, they transition from tropical cyclones to post-tropical cyclones with a different structure that includes weather fronts and a larger but less intense spread of winds. That's why ex-hurricanes can affect the UK, but it's unlikely that an actual hurricane would ever directly hit us.